in the angelic ranking in all of creation only man could reveal the dimensions of god and lucifer had perceived this thing so he wanted to enter into it i will exalt my throne above this you know the holy ghost began to teach me and he said there are three major things that defines the value of a man's existence the first is the knowledge of god that a man has because in the realm of the spirit knowledge is not information knowledge is life he said this is life eternal that you may know him the only true god and him whom he has sent so when he's talking about knowledge he's talking about the degree of experience that you have with god the intercourse the depth of mingling that happens between you and god and it's that depth that determines the virtues the volumes of life that flows out of you the second thing that defines your essence and brings meaning to your existence is the depth of your of your worship of god because you see worship is not a song you can worship through singing but worship is actually an act of surrendering your essence to him so that he is glorified so when a man worships god the god essence that is in him he submits it back to god so in the heavens they are like fragrances that's why sometimes when god wants you to worship him he makes a demand the first time the word worship was used in scripture is genesis 22 verse 5 abraham was going to kill isaac now it was in that sacrifice that abraham was going to release himself completely to god so that everything that defined who he was will be surrendered and i tell people i say the loudest worship that earth ever heard was in gethsemane when jesus said not my will but thine you know sometimes we sing songs to god we are trying to release our gratitude release our appreciation all of that is the essence of god in us that we are pouring out to him so when a man comes to the point where he is able to release himself to god he has released worship he said that's the second thing that defines your excellence and you can't worship god except there is a god element in you your ability to apprehend the god element and to release it back to god either through obedience through sacrifice through singing through dancing is what god calls worship and every day god expects those fragrances to rise from us to the heavens and then the third thing that determines your essence and existence is the quality of service you can render to god being part of god's agenda because at the end of time what we actually give value to your existence is the kind of role that you could play in god's corporate agenda because god is on a mission on the earth realm and men are his foot soldiers the part you play in that agenda is what will determine your ranking in the world that is to come and some men played it so well that errors a whole error was handed to them he said until the time of john that means in the whole of that dispensation john was the one who served god above every other so you couldn't find anybody until you entered the syllabus of john because as far as god's agenda was concerned john embodied it so I do, I've taught before, I said when you go to heaven, when they are reading the history of humankind, they won't say 1945. Because there's no time in that realm. In the realm is an eternal realm. Time does not have value there. So how will God trace his agenda from one generation to generation? From the time of John. From the time of Abraham. From the time of Enoch. So men will represent dispensations in Zion. This scripture that he read to us here, showed us that god wants to release his glory he culminated it in christ but the church is the vehicle and so he told us that from eden god started the business of church and that business is that his glory should be seen on the earth but you see the unfortunate thing men didn't realize it that they were called to swim in a river that began from eternity past and is going through eternity future so we are not really special it is our participation that makes us special 
and because we don't know that this you know god can appear to you and say moses i i need to use you and you will think you are somebody when you now go back to the chronicles you will discover that you are the 1000th person that god has used in that agenda he has used 1000 people before you you are and when you finish he will use another 1000 after you so you are part of a chronicle <laughs> you know it was in the book of matthew chapter one when they started talking about jesus that was when we discovered that abraham was not important <laughs> it was actually a journey to the messiah so the whole reason why you had adam abraham david thank god for all they did because of the degree to which they serve god they found a place for themselves in god but the story was not about them they were a channel through which god wanted to reach jesus christ and now that he has reached jesus he's still doing something and we are channels through which he wants to manifest his glory if you know this you will never fail in your assignment because you will discover that this thing is a journey from eternity past into eternity future you are just a junction you are a junction you know when adam fell he didn't know that god was passing through him he was not the destination if he knew that he was not the destination he would have done everything possible to keep the path so that the holy ghost could pass but he fell and god still went to Cain. he said if you did right you would have been accepted seeing light at your door but you have power over it Cain didn't know he was fighting with his brother he was doing petty sentiment jealousy he didn't know he forfeited something meanwhile Cain would have been the second person on the corridor so even though adam fell god came to cain again this journey will still pass through you but cain fell and killed abel so god had to raise another womb another seed god said but said pass the test and god keep moving like that from one generation to another and as we read the bible we keep finding men who failed even judas who was supposed to be part of the 12th tribe of, of sit on 12th throne to judge 12 tribes of israel he sold his own for 30 pieces of silver some of us have sold our own on the bed of fornication some of us have sold our own for 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 ten thousand you wanted to carry a hair you wanted to carry buy a phone and you didn't know that your life is a conduit an ancient spirit is walking through you in order to fulfill a purpose of manifesting glory i don't know about you but i won't fail by the mercies of god i won't fail i came for a purpose and i will allow god right through me for his glory to be manifested can you pray for five minutes holy ghost help me help me help me i receive grace not to fail i receive grace who knows if what we are doing here was part of what paul did who knows and in the days of paul he wrote 14 letters epistles that became compass for a generation and then i come in the order of paul and then i fall on the lap of a woman or i fell because somebody gave me one million god forbid i will stand my ground and when i pass i will become a doorway for another generation i'll become a doorway for another dispensation can you pray for the grace to stand for the grace to finish well for the grace to stand for the grace to finish well see when you read the bible it should humble you some some of us standing here before we came the holy ghost had to gather people from different places because they needed to pray some prayers for for, for certain channels to be open through your soul men needed to prophesy for certain portals you, you think your soul is just a faculty of reasoning you don't know that your soul is a gateway for certain ordinations to pass and for some of us before we came go and look at the story of david before david ever appeared on the scene there was a woman called ruth that married a husband had two sons they went to a city looking for bread the two sons died and the daughter-in-law refused to stay back naomi who married the woman and ruth refused to stay back and god gathered them back 
from that city brought them back to Israel and the woman was manipulated to meet Boaz so that Boaz can give birth to Jesse before David appeared what God was looking at was a throne that could mirror Christ and it didn't matter two men died in a strange nation the woman was gathered back they needed to bring a Moabite woman to couple with an Israelite to create a gangway for a king to manifest and you think a David is a casual person he was a particular channel because others passed but now God wanted to add kingship so there's a dimension of soul that can trap worship there's a dimension of soul that can trap warfare there's a dimension of soul that can trap samistry there's a dimension he required a lot of company so the Spirit of God went three generations before he came so that that dimension can be created you think it's a joke before Samson was born an angel was sent from heaven and went to the mother you cannot drink any strong wine you are not permitted to drink any strong wine because the child coming is a Nazarite unto God those are gateways you think you just came you think you just appeared before John the Baptist was born the Bible spoke of a woman she lost her husband and for 84 years she was in the temple praying so she lost her husband it was not a loss it was necessary for her priesthood to be erected to be able to raise a prophet in the order of John 700 years before John came Isaiah prophesied there's a voice in the wilderness crying prepare a way for the Lord 700 years prophecy 84 years intercession for a prophet like John to emerge so that the agenda of God can be fulfilled some of you don't even know how many prophets were born so that you could come some of you don't know how many intercessors manifested so that you could come that's why you think you can fall and say God I'm sorry no way no way there's a gangway a gangway for prophecy a gangway for ordination a gangway for the agenda of God I will not rest until I fulfill my purpose and when I'm done I will rest with the fathers can you pray the spirit why do you think some of you all you've gone through you've not died from reproach of men from attacks of Satan from crisis financial crisis you are still here some of you you are your bet is a product of 800 years prophecy you don't know you were just born and then from the age of five you started singing with a golden voice it doesn't shock you why others who have gone to singing school can't sing like you you woke up you can talk and arrest the attention of men you think it's because you are wise there are things that were coupled by the wisdom of the ancient so that a particular set of combination can be put together for a source structure to be created so that a grace can find expression that is why you came and you came so that you too can become a gateway for another generation to emerge this is why you must pray so that you find yourself before Satan finds you can you imagine the investigations that were going on in the demonic realm before Jesus came everybody that looked like a deliverer Satan will go there and he traced until he found Jesus because he knew something was coming and he was finding he wanted to stop everybody that was a channel but God preserved them so all the battles that Israel went through was to truncate that gate so that the Messiah won't come there was a time when they were taken to Egypt 430 years captivity he wanted to stop that lineage they were carried to Babylon 70 years captivity he was watching a star is coming a star the prophet spoke about it and it was not just Satan even the angels of, of darkness they knew the priest of darkness they knew only those in church were not aware the moment the star of Jesus appeared in the east the Bible said magis they saw it and they said this is a king and they traced that star until they came to the manger meanwhile we were in church doing politics they had two high priests they thought it was about collecting money meanwhile darkness was going through a yawns of investigation you must find yourself that's why it's not enough for somebody to pray for you you must find yourself 
I may not know about you, but me, I'm an apostle. I have a mandate for my generation and I will fulfill it by the Spirit. I prophesy over someone. Whatever it is that God combined in order for you to emerge, the grace that preserves, the grace that exalts us, the grace that causes ordinations to find expression, it rests upon you now. Most times when we pray, we are telling God, look at the corruption in Nigeria. Look at the failure in leadership. Look at the one happening in the West. And God is wondering, that one is obvious. The real thing we should pray for are the men that carry the solutions. Because everything you see that is not consistent with God's mandate is a sign that there's an ordination that has not been fulfilled. Some of you listening to me now, hear this. You are the answer to Nigeria. And some of you, not just Nigeria, you are the answer of the Western world. You may have been born in Africa. It's a strategy to hide you until the day of your manifestation. You think Jesus came from Egypt? No, he needed to have been hidden in Egypt so that when he returned, the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness should see a great light. You are in Nigeria, but you may be the answer to Zambia. You may be the answer to Canada. You may be the answer to America. You may be the answer to Congo, but you must emerge as a prince in Zion. You must emerge and so to light the grace for emergence. The grace for manifestation. It comes upon you by the power of the Holy Ghost. There are many arrows from the demonic realm to stop you from manifesting some of you is fear some of you is the garment of heaviness you can't rise up and watch they say i will stand upon my watch and i will see what he will say to me say write the vision make it plain upon tables that it might run that reach it some of you can't rise there's a garment of heaviness for some of you it's iniquity every three months you fall it's a power it's a counter program from darkness some of you is disfavor some of you is abject poverty but now i come to speak on upon your life as one sent as a voice over a generation in the name of jesus the christ i decree and declare every force of darkness that has executed your destiny by the power of the risen christ by the testimony of the blood by the verdicts of the cross by the oppressions of the holy ghost and by the authority of the name of jesus i cancel those programs now i cancel those programs now i cancel those programs now arise shine your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you arise shine your light is come the glory of the lord is risen upon you every darkness around your life they scatter now by the authority of light and illumination. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Concerning your life, only the will of God will stand. It doesn't matter for how long you have been delayed. But hear this. This same anointing does not just occasion restoration it also provokes speed they said the hand of god was support my goodness somebody is about to catch something i'm sensing a pole of fire now it's like a ball burning with flames wherever you are standing what shall help me with these ones now these ones are violent witnesses by the spirit of the witnesses by the powers of the ages to come step into that ordination now on ground online, Peredia, Papadusa, Vavacade, Baracados, Sakai, Tadila, Baruta, Tabak, Zanzala, Zanzala, Priestesses of the altar, Seers, Prophets, Watchers, Custodians of Dimension, Maraca, Papacuda, Capacatoa, Financiers of Divine Programs, Keleko, Gatekeepers, Saparacuna, Pagataka. Calling artificials, wise orators, wherever you are, I come with a new law, I come with a new verdict, I decree and declare that which was written concerning you before the foundations of the earth, I release life upon it. There's a glory 
God wants to manifest through Christ in the church. That's why Christ is in you. He said Christ in you is the hope of glory. But by priesthood, you must cause for everything of Christ in you to find expression. That's why I say, let your light so shine. It's your duty to let it. He said, arise, shine. If you don't arise, you will never shine. Now, the grace to stand and to burn like a fire and a light over a generation. I decree by the authority in the name of Jesus that grace comes upon you now. Lift your hands and honor the Lord. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. I fuse into God's agenda, I align into God's eternal ordination. I take my place by grace and by the insistence of priesthood and alignment. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We bless you, Lord, you are holy.